I have a sign in front of my desk, so let's pretend it's here right now. I had it there when I was the mayor. I keep it with me now. I'll put it there when I become president. It says I'm responsible. Throughout the years, the ever humble Rudy Giuliani has insisted he is a man of law and order and a man who is above reproach. Nothing disturbs me more than to see all of the revelations of crime committed by some of the most powerful and some of the wealthiest members of our society. I do think that the work in my office and other parts of the Justice Department has changed the definition of the problem of crime in America. We're held together by law and we're held together by respect for the law. That's what America is all about. I think I've had both an open, transparent government and an open, transparent life, and it allows you to lead then with honesty and truth. Giuliani has maintained that self-righteous, sanctimonious position despite having his home and office raided by federal agents earlier this year. He has been open about his contempt for the man who preceded him as Donald Trump's personal lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen. He's been lying for years. I mean, uh, the, t the tapes that we have demonstrate any number of very serious lies by him back a year and a half ago, including his fooling people, hiding tape recordings, telling them they weren't recorded, lying to their face, breaking faith with them, taping his client, which is a disbarrable offense. Well, today it's Giuliani who is in danger of being disbarred. A New York appellate court just suspended his law license after finding, quote, there is uncontroverted evidence that respondent communicated demonstrably false and misleading statements to courts, lawmakers and the public at large in his capacity as lawyer for former President Donald J. Trump and the Trump campaign in connection with Trump's failed effort at re-election in 2020. Speaking outside his Manhattan home on the 35th anniversary of the day Trump's original lawyer and fixer, Roy Cohn, was disbarred, Giuliani called the suspension ridiculous and tried to position himself alongside Michael Cohn, the man he once demonized. Somebody's got to fix this uh double standard justice system, which is not America anymore. I mean, it's only Trump lawyers who have their offices raided. It's only Trump lawyers who get penalized without anybody hearing their side of the case. Only Trump lawyers. What do they have in common? As a columnist in New York Daily News and staff writer from New York Magazine, Michael Daly chronicled decades of nefarious incidents in the checkered political career of Rudy Giuliani. Giuliani even once referred to Daly as public enemy number one. Michael Daly is now a special correspondent for the Daily Beast. Danya Perry is a former federal prosecutor for the Southern District of New York, which Giuliani once ran. She was one of the signers of the complaint that led to Giuliani getting his law license suspended today. And both join me now. Um, Danya, let me start with you. If you could just tell us what the complaint was and what the kind of technical legal, you know, legal ethical finding here is. Sure. So the allegations here were of a pattern of false and misleading statements made uh, to courts and to the public in general. And the allegation here before the grievance committee was that these were not only um, false and uh, dishonest, but actually threatened imminent public harm and that they were continuing and that there was no likelihood that they would stop and that this was actually an offense and a danger to the rule of law in this country. So this type of complaint by one lawyer against another lawyer is not lightly undertaken. And this was done for the reasons I said, and the court, this, the panel of five judges in granting the temporary suspension of Giuliani's license found not only was there a pattern of deceitful conduct here, but that the threat was ongoing and that required mm. immediate suspension pending a full disciplinary hearing. Michael, obviously, you've covered uh, Giuliani for, for decades. And I think, you know, this is someone who made his name as a lawyer, as 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 a guy who's a sort of swaggering courtroom presence like this was what he did. How do you think this hits him? <laughs> I, you know, I. I remember I, I caught him speeding once and his reaction was, if this can happen, this is no longer America. So now here he is again saying it's no longer America. I mean, he got caught. And uh, if you read the complaint, it's really, it, it's kind of astonishing that, uh, how brazen it was and how he kept doing it, even when he knew that uh, he was being examined. I mean, it was, uh, I never read anything quite like that. I um, 
I thought every, people always say to me, what happened to Rudy? And I always say, well, you know, what happened to him is he woke up in the morning. You know, <laughs> he basically has always been the same guy. But you read this and you see that something really did happen. And I just go back to when the, the 15th anniversary of 9-11, that he and Chris Christie were down with Trump. And then Rudy was dancing around Trump like he was a little Pekingese lap dog right at his feet. And it, it was... Um, it was this total subservience. And and I think that it being down there, that meant that Rudy, Mr. 9-11, accepted all of Trump's lies about 9-11, like having had hundreds of friends die, about having help down there, about having seen Muslims cheer. And I mean, he kept lying and lying and lying. Trump did about 9-11. And for Rudy, that was fine. So I guess, and now he ends up himself telling lies about dead voters. I mean, you know, it's... Well, the, the, your point about the complaint, I think, is is striking because I agree like there's in some ways there's tremendous continuity here. But, you know, Donia, what all of us watched, right, was this was fundamentally a fraudulent undertaking. It was laughed out of every courtroom. It was there was it was a lie. The whole thing was a lie. We all knew it. We all saw it. And I think a lot of people were asking as this was happening, Giuliani's going courtroom to courtroom where he would be a little hedged he, when he was pressed. He would try to be a little more careful. Like, can you do this? Isn't there some at some point on all of these people, um, Sidney Powell and the rest, like some ethical bar that says as a lawyer, you shouldn't be able to go in courtrooms and do it. I got to say, and you mean, really got to work at it to be jammed up for lying as a lawyer. I mean, that's <laughs> half of them. That's what they do for a living. But, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> I won't respond to that. Um, this is, I, this I, is. I said half. Yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> the other half. Um, this is the outlier. And, and, you know, it's a odd coincidence that the Dominion uh, argument happened, you know, on, on the same day. And it, in, in, in some way, there's there's one issue that's at heart in both cases, which is were these statements made while the speaker knew at right. the time that they were false? And the panel today found, yes, Rudy Giuliani knowingly made false statements. And they they went through in, in great detail how how they came to this conclusion, including the reliance on unnamed sources on confidential informants, which they pointed out in a great footnote, don't exist uh, with private attorneys, and that the, the statements are internally inconsistent. As you said, Chris, he jumps around in, in the space of one court hearing. He said, yes, we're relying on accusations of fraud. No, we're not. And you cannot do that as, as a lawyer. The, the lawyers are supposed to be held, no matter what Michael says, to a higher standard. Well, no, and no, I, no, I, that, was, that was unfair. <laughs> I agree. But the I do, and I do know that criminal lawyers a lot of times don't ask their clients, did you do it? Because then if the client says, yeah, they can't go in court and act like the guy didn't do it. So there's there's. Um, so I'm aware of that. And, and you know, and, and what shocked me, Rudy, was just the total disregard for that. It's it's I mean, as a lawyer, you must just be. I don't know. Well, and that's why, as, as I said at the outset, Chris, I mean, in, in practicing law for 25 years, this is one of only two complaints that I've been party to. The other one, I will say, was against Eric Schneiderman, the former mm -hmm. New York attorney general who violently sexually abused a number of women, including me. So that was that seemed uh, worthy of complaint. Yeah. And this very different reason seems worthy of complaint. And I'll say in that case, his license was not suspended temporarily. He was not deemed to be <laughs> a, a public danger, nor did we even request it. I was not aware until this complaint that it was available. So this is a real outlier case, and that's exactly what the panel found today.